Right, so today we welcome Andrew McNally. So Andrew is the Senior NGO Manager of Thomas Swan, a chemical manufacturer based in Concert. Um, having gained his master's qualification in chemical and process engineering, he's since worked his way up rapidly in the sector and held senior positions in companies like Vitellis, Axnabel and Nissan. For the last four years, he's been managing the engineering team at Thomas Swan, and I'm looking forward to going for the journey. So uh, yeah, Andrew, welcome to the podcast. How are you? Thank you very much, Mark. Yes, uh, thank you for the invitation. Very well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Looking yeah, no, look, look, looking forward to it. Yeah, good man. So, um, look, I like to start it with the same question every time. Um, so, what does it mean to you? What do you say to uh, to be a leader? Yeah, I think um, I think being a leader is um, obviously it's a role of responsibility, but um, it can have a big impact on on individuals within the team. So, I think as a leader, it's um, important to have a, a vision and a strategy. Um, to be clear about that vision and where, where your people and your team fit into that, what part they play, so they understand the value they're adding to the team when you're asking them to do tasks or, or delegating. Um, they can kind of see that, that bigger picture and, uh, and why what you're asking them to do is, is of value. Um, I think as a leader, um, it's, it's your opportunity to bring people up. I think that's, um, that's, the, that's the main part. It's... Um, a good, a good leader um, supports supports his people or her people, um, and helps them be the best they can be and um, achieve perhaps beyond what the what they realise they're capable of. Um, I think particularly early on in in a, in a career, um, a leader's influence is incredibly important on setting the career path for a, um, a, a junior engineer. In my in my case, starting out, um, I was you're obviously um, you train to a train to a level or you've 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 read and studied at a university, but um a big old world out there uh, they don't tell you how to apply it at the university. So it's all about um it's all about somebody giving you a bit of a leg up, supporting you and helping you um helping you sort of develop yourself and um and take a little bit of little bit of risk in which uh, in which you learn in a safe in a safe environment. That's that's a that's what a leader means to me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I like that. And, and I think particularly, you're right, it's the selfless side, isn't it? I think. Yeah. And we've all had managers who are, are in it for themselves and they just see you as, as part of their journey. And then you get the ones that are properly actually motivated by by helping you and that, that's where they get their their bus from. I think we can all remember those managers versus the ones that were, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. The opposite of that. No, I, I completely yeah. agree. It's, it's difficult because no, no one teaches you. And I think you don't, you don't, you don't appreciate it until you are a manager, how difficult it is. And I think you also don't know how or why you're motivated until you're, you're doing the job. It's yeah. uh, it's a lonely, a lonely gig at times, isn't it? It can, it certainly, yeah, it certainly can be. Yeah. 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 Um, so let, let, let's take it right back then. I like to um, just literally take it right back to the early days. I'm quite interested in, in talking at some point with yourself through your route in terms of the university side and, and, and what you did, but actually, yeah, Taking it right back even before that, you know, going back to whenever it was, 98, 2000, when you were, you know, before university, did you know uh, what you wanted to be? Or did, you know, it was it, <laughs> what, what was the thought process there? No, no I think, um, I think originally I wanted to be a, a doctor and then, then oh. I was a dentist and then it was a yeah. fri- forensic scientist. Um, <laughs> and then... <laughs> yeah. All the good I jobs, though. Yeah. It was a, like a great big fat um, careers book in the... In, yeah. the, um, in the sixth form uh, college uh, when I was there and I was yeah. I was flicking through thinking ah oh, come on what do I, what do I want to do I look at forensic science to say oh, it's not paid enough so look at look at something else I like science I like I like maths I like sort of physics and science and stuff so yeah. I give engineering a shot and then I looked in the kind of engineering sections read through like what what each of the disciplines do uh, do for the sort of civils to electrical to um, instrumentation to uh, eventually sort of arrived as sort of chemical and process uh, engineering. I thought, oh, that sounds, uh, that sounds pretty good. And um, I hadn't kind of pieced together what uh, um, sort of chemical or process engineer did. So um, yeah. I thought, oh, I can, get, I can get into that. I like, a, I like a bit of science, like a bit of maths, and um, I like all these sort of example like, a- applications. So, yeah, yeah. Well, let's, let's have a go. Yeah. Where, 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 where does that come from then? Because I guess I find sort of, you know, maths, probably maths and science in particular, 
you either love it or you hate it. And I think it, yeah. you know, people yeah. either way it's going. Yeah. Was that something which was just an inbuilt passion or do you see that from your family and stuff or? Uh, I, I guess so. I think, um, well, for me, you're either, you're either kind of a numbers person or you're, um, you're a sort of a words person. And uh, I can sort of get by with, uh, with English as most of us can, <laughs> but <laughs> I kind of excelled in sort of maths and um, science and the kind of application. And, um, and then I'm, fairly sort of practical and uh sort of logically minded so it um kind of have a kind of engineer's engineer's head if you like uh yeah. i've got a sort of practical solution for most most problems so i guess that's where it came from and, and what was it what was university life for you then was was it the whole experience moving out getting everything or were you were you sort of staying at home and then just doing your studies what was yeah, the, the kind of a, a dilute yeah, i stayed stayed at home save the save the cash um, yeah pretty sensible in that and um and the the sort of degree in um, chemical engineering, it was uh, it was full on. It was sort of full time. So we sort of um, sort of past the past the guys in sort of days like this, where it's um, where it's red hot, sitting yeah. outside drinking drinking <laughs> pints in the sun. But they're only doing sort of 15, 20 hours a week, and uh, yeah, it was pretty pretty tough. But um, well, thoroughly enjoyed it uh, outside of the outside of the study as well. Yeah, I mean that must be you know you don't you still don't find many people with masters. You know that's still yeah, a yeah. rarity. It was was the plan? I mean, you. I imagine you could have left after three years and gone done with you. Know, or did was you always was your plan always to do the four years and, and get be as qualified as you possibly could be? Um, yeah, I set out. I set out to do that. Um, I, I opted for a year in industry as well. So nice. um, my third year, uh, third or fourth year, was um, was done in industry um, in the oil and gas industry as well. So that was uh, right. So yeah, that was a bit of. Um, a bit of a lesson, uh, sort of applying the the sort of first first couple of years of um, of theory in a in a practical situation in a real engineering role as well. Obviously, with um, yeah. sort of support from from the engineers and, and the staff at the staff at there. But it was it was I was doing sort of real value added uh, activities as well and, and learning at, at much a fast at a much faster rate than I was I felt that I was at university to the point where I was kind of sort of questioning. Do do I really want to go back? Do I want to come? Yeah. My fourth year, but um, it was. I mean, for me, I, I kind of set out and said I wanted to be a. I wanted to be a professional engineer, and to to do that, I felt like I needed the the masters and the route to um, sort of chartered engineer status. Um, yeah. So that's that's why I that's why I went down the masters route. Just a, uh, an easier route. Yeah, and, and I personally, what you think? I still don't think you know. It, it took you to to pick up a book and and see that journey, but I still don't think there's enough to install to go look. This is what you. This is what you can do. You know. This yeah. is what you can be, and this is what you can. You know. You like quite rightly. You looked at doctors and 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 surgeons and things which earn well, I guess, and, yeah. and yeah. you can earn some bloody good money as a senior engineer, engineer, and engineer manager. But I don't think that's really. I, I don't think people know that at schools. You've got to dig deep oh, in the book oh, and know how good at science. You know, it's typical, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you, you need. You require somebody to tell you. And I mean, there's some there's some good um, sort of STEM work going on now with. Uh, Sort of integration with uh, and interaction with schools, um, spoiled somewhat by the COVID, as as everything else was. But um, there's some there's some good people out there, and um, some good companies as well, putting a little bit back. Um, and, I, and I got involved. I got involved in that from a from an early stage um, during my placement. Um, the company I was placed with had a, a regular interaction with uh, local schools and uh, colleges as well, exactly. and sort of all, like uh, open days and. Um, Sort of meet the meet the engineer and and that sort of thing, which I think I think is important for yeah for uh, for kids to understand what what else there is available. You, you don't have to just be a teacher because that's all you ever see, uh, really? you and you can be other things. Exactly that, and it is it's, it's that link, isn't it? It's that link between the, the schools and the colleges to make yeah. that work. And schools, colleges, and, and and the the factories, the companies, because um, uh, yeah. I don't think the government are going to help us out, so we've got to, we've got to make sure we do it ourselves. It's one of those, isn't it? So, uh, so yeah, it's tough one. So, I mean, straight out of university after your after your masters, then working. Obviously, you had that year on your belt, which must have been a massive help for you to or have some experience there. What were those yeah. first few years like? Because it was at Sellafield you were working for initially, was it? It was. Yeah, I started at uh, Sellafield on a graduate training program, um, yeah. straight into a. Um, like an operations support role, so uh, offering sort of technical support to the running of um, the decommissioning uh, facility, which was uh, reprocessing um, spent nuclear fuel from the uh, UK Magnox yeah. sites. So it was, yeah, pretty good. Um, I mean, it, 
a giant of a place, sort of 10,000 people working there. Yeah. And um, as you can imagine, so many, so many controls as to uh, sort of um, entry and egress and uh, what, you, what you do when you work there, no biting your nails and um, <laughs> yeah. all sort of hygiene and things because the, yeah, what you're working with is potentially, potentially nasty. Um, and getting straight into it, sort of, um, sort of doing, taking the theoretical calculations that um, I'd learned at the university and then taking that into practice and, um, and sort of being put into roles of responsibility where you, um, you're doing risk assessments or making calculations on, on behalf of other people um, and poten- potentially um, quite risky if, it's, if you're not right. So it's, uh, I think um, certainly at the early stages, it was, um, it was a comfort to have, have support from um, a, a mentor um, and, um, and a manager um, or, or um, sort of peers, more senior peers who would um, who would give you that little bit of little bit of confidence and um, it often wasn't a, um, a it was, often wasn't a, a technical discipline that was that was supporting it was it was somebody to just help you help you think through the your thought process and um, yeah and give you the give you the self confidence in what you've what you've done and uh, in order to uh, sort of submit it and then not not worry about it if you if you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah so so someone's some there support you, but I guess you, you did it yourself. It was your work. You just had Yeah, yeah, exactly that. So yeah, I think um I think it's I think it's important for um for well certainly certainly early early stages to to have that to have that support and that uh, that fallback of, of somebody to um to help you help you find your help you find your feet and your your confidence and from from there, if you kind of given given those kind of basic inputs, I think um, it's a it's an opportunity to thrive, and uh, and and I did I did well as a as a result of that. Um, so I was promoted uh, fairly early on um, into a like a senior a senior role. But then um, decided to leave. Um, decided uh, West Cumbria wasn't for me, and um, there wasn't enough going on. So, so train, yeah. Um, there's that when it's when the weather, weather's nice there's no way better but um <laughs> yeah. more often than not, it's raining <laughs> <laughs> but no it is it's nice by the world definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um so i mean i find that people your management career and how you manage now obviously is is because of all the managers that you've had yourself but i think uh-huh. it's that molding initially you've had typically your first take your, your first mentors is is it's it's a big big part of it would you yeah. agree with that? What do you say in terms of that first Absol- few years? Absolutely. absolutely, and I think um, I think as a leader, it's a big responsibility. Um, I, th- I think I think you've got to you've got to catch catch people early doors. Um, I mean, we've um, I've taken on many a sort of uh, junior or, or fresh graduates in some cases, or or people who aren't aren't um, aren't graduates who have um, sort of come up from the apprentice route through HNC and Kind of, I think it's important to kind of develop them, develop them up as well, um, as well as bringing in uh, sort of graduates. But I, th- I think um, certainly with employees starting out, I mean, with um, ex- other examples are apprentices as well. I think at early doors, you've got to help them kind of set out the stall and uh, give them a safe environment uh, with which to um, sort of bring forward their ideas, um, push themselves a little bit with a with a comfort that they can fall back on a. On a on a leader who's um, who's going to support them if it goes wrong, I think that's I think that's really important. Um, obviously, you have to uh, give people in sort of instruction and training and um, a bit of guidance as to what to what to do. But um, I think I think it's a massive confidence boost once once you once you start to deliver your own your own little job or you've, you've got your own little win, and then it just kind of snowballs from there in terms of what what these people. Um, can deliver for you if you invest that little bit of time and um, patience, and um, it it is it is time because that uh, I mean of, often they require a lot of time early on, but it's it's an investment. You've got to invest in people, I think, to uh, yeah. help yeah. them. Yeah, I love that, and, and that was obviously a a big part of it for you when you when you first started out. I mean, can can you pinpoint 
your best ever manager. You know, it's uh, have a name him. You can if you want, but I mean, yeah, just uh, I was interested in that in terms of why that was why it was the case. Um, I've got a, I mean, I've got a few examples, and I've taken from from each um, something different. Um, I, don't, I haven't really had a um, had a manager in the same in the same with the same discipline, if you like. So it's not yeah yeah not like a technical manager as such. I've had um, I've had managers who are non. Not the same, not the same discipline. Yeah. Um, certainly, certainly early on, um, I had I had a mentor who was the same, same discipline, and I, I got a lot from. But um, probably not so much as I got from, from the manager at the time. Uh, she was called she called Janine at um, at Sellafield, and she, uh, yeah, she really really helped me. Um, sort of give me, give me uh, a little bit of instruction, but um, give me the the scope to um, to find my own own way give me some opportunities um probably beyond my experience at the time but with the with the kind of fallback of um contact this person to to check your check your work if you're not confident or um look don't worry if it's uh if it goes wrong um it's a it's a safe environment if uh, it, it doesn't matter if it's not right the first time then yeah that's that's fine moving on to the, the stuff where um where i was confident to um Sort of do uh, sort of big, big things where um, where I was confident in what I was doing, um, following a sort of methodical approach, which I'd been kind of taught, and then self checking or or peer checking where re- where required. So yeah, yeah, I think that worked on pretty well. Yeah, and it, it seems to me what I can hear as well, which you've obviously carried through to your own management, is that the big one is is giving people the support, but also trusting them to have a go by saying, you know, at, at, at Sellerfield the. Uh, the amount of responsibility yeah. you'd have had as a as a young lad, I guess, was was probably a, uh-huh. a, initially quite daunting, I guess. But having gone yeah. through that and been successful, obviously, it it made you who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly that. Um, you've got to you've got to trust the people you work with. Uh, you've got to trust your team. Um, my worst nightmare in a manager is a micromanager. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't I don't need managed. I don't need micromanage certainly. Um, yeah. So that's that's a nightmare. I have I have worked for for those who want to know. Uh, sort of the the ins and outs, and it um, it, it, dra- it drags you down, it gets gets you down, and uh, the, the last thing you the last thing you want is to when you when you're putting a lot of a lot of time or a lot of hours in is to um, is to kind of go go over your over your quota, just just reporting and uh, communicating to to somebody who doesn't doesn't trust you. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent, exactly that. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, I completely agree. Uh, have you ever gone for a stage in your career where you've you doubted yourself and doubted judgment, judgment, because I guess for sometimes we have to make decisions on the information, all the information we know. But how do uh-huh. you how do you deal with that? And how I guess how have you dealt with that over the years? And has that yeah. changed over time? Uh, it does, yeah, yeah. I think um, I think I think with with age, you you kind of mellow anyway, don't you? And um, I've sort of got twenty years, sort of post grad experience now. So I've seen I've seen more things. I've made I've made plenty of mistakes as people people do. It's um for me it's how you how you learn from the, yeah. the mistakes and how you how you how you take ownership. The book the book stops here if you like and um and you and you make it right. But um I mean over over time you you kind of learn learn what what works and um you have to you have to take risks. You have to take risks with um other, otherwise you don't otherwise you don't change. But um this this calculated risks and the more experience you get the more the more you understand um how far you can push things and uh yeah. and what the sort of what the consequences are what the fallbacks are what your plan b is what your plan c is and oh, yeah. um how you how you're going to fix it how long it's going to take how much it's going to cost and yeah. um but the, the stage i'm at now i'm um i'm encouraging i'm encouraging people to take to take these risks to um to kind of take the take the stabilizers off and just just go for it. Have a have a have a go, and if if you if you wobble, I'll I'll be there to uh, kind of knock you knock you back. Yeah, go on, <laughs> don't worry. But that's uh, I've seen that with a with a couple of couple of people now, and it's um, to me one of the most rewarding things at this kind of point in my career is is, is watching is watching people watching people grow and then seeing them um, seeing them thrive, seeing the seen the names up in, in newsletters of um they've done this and they've, they've achieved that and um 
we've saved this, isn't this wonderful? And uh, it's really nice to see people um, people doing really well. And to know you've you've played a part in that, I agree. It's uh... yeah, it's a, it's a it's a small part because the because they do all the work. It's uh, yeah. it's, it's just a bit of mentoring and, and coaching yeah. and. Um, I guess build, building them up. That's that's what it's all about: building them up and, and supporting them when they when they when they make mistakes. Yeah. I, I always think when I ask the people the question of who you who your favourite manager was, I always think it would be really nice one day. Do you know what I mean? For ten years, for years, someone to go, oh, to to say to say your name, not not as an ego boost, but just because it's hard work and it's it's scary yeah. sometimes, and and, and we we make mistakes. But to know you've you've made a difference in someone's career. I mean, I personally, that's, that's something that I don't think you can ever beat. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because yeah. we're, we're in a, a position of responsibility and, and ultimately it's, it's up to us where we can, we can help support that person and we can't. And uh-huh. that is, is, is catastrophic. So yeah, I, I, I completely agree. Um, in, in regard to the, the degree side to it, obviously you get people who go, you know, apprenticeships, great route, university, yeah. great route. So both you know, the two ways it's going to cut, but you're going to be biased because obviously that's the way you came through. But what do you think is the the most you know if you, if if you sit your, your your son or daughter down now and they say look what what what, what am I doing Dad? Am I doing degree so and so? Which way yeah. would you say? Um, I think it's a, I think it's a difficult one. I think um, I think degrees have been oversubscribed um, in recent in recent years. I think the I think the costs incredible. Compared to what uh, what it costs when I when I went, and I think um, my recommendation to to um, to people at uh, sort of school and college now is to consider carefully um, what what it is you want to do, um, because there's a, there are other routes. Uh, the other issue we have um, in the business now is the is the lack of subscription to um, apprentices over over, the, over that same period. Yeah. Um, we've seen a we're seeing a, um, like a, a real drop off in, in terms of what we have in terms of um, an age profile of the of our um, more senior more senior guys who are due to retirement through to a, a big gap to a um, to a couple in their um, sort of thirties um, to to a, to a couple of younger ones which which we've been we've been taking on over the over the past few years but um, yeah it's an incredible gap it's uh, I think um, I think a degree has been a rite of passage, um, and it's it's not the only it's not the only route. Um, I mean, we've got a I've got an excellent guy in my team now, who's um, who's come up the apprentice route, um, HNC. We're putting them through an HND now, and he's going to do his degree. And he, he wants and he's he's fantastic at what he does. He wants to be a he wants to be an engineer, and um, and I certainly wouldn't um, swap him for a for a graduate in a million years. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. It's, uh, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, if you look at, you know, I've, I've done some work this last few weeks on, um, you know, the, the the robotic side automation and all the new technology and how, you know, manufacturing is going to change. And it's going to be a whole new, it's a whole new set of skills, I guess, because on one hand, people are saying it's going to replace people, but I'd argue against that. I'd say, yes, there'll be certain jobs that it's going to replace, but it's going to create other opportunities with the manufacturing engineering. It's just, it's yeah. a it's a reframing it and and how are we gonna but how are we going to to skill up people who are working for us now or how are we going to create routes so people get into manufacturing so they aren't just the old traditional routes you know uh, because yeah. it's a, it's a whole different skill your robotics you know do you think do you think that it's a way that we can look at degrees and, and look at specific degrees obviously yours is very niche to what you do now or is it something we can look at the curriculum and the, and the apprenticeships and, and, the, and have routes for people to be robotics engineers and, and so on and so forth. What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think we need to, I think we certainly need to adapt. Um, and I'm not sure I'm seeing that through, through the curriculum uh, currently. We do, we do see um, sort of IT and um, the sort of bringing in encoding and stuff like that. But it, um, I think that the schools seem um, sort of we're, we're behind the, we're behind the times that just sort of, like starting to really push it now as part of the curriculum, whereas um, I mean, it's computers are kind of old news now. It's, uh, it's too things, late. Things are, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I think it, I think it is. I mean, it's good for the current generation, but then no doubt they'll be a, a decade behind um, behind industry once the once they graduate. So yeah, um, I think in terms of uh, examples of, of automation, that's what we've that's what I've pushed in the past. Um, 
sort of I'm trying to think sort of eight, eight, ten years now. Um, so taking um, taking processes and adding, adding as much automation as possible in order to improve um, like manufacturing efficiencies, uh, reduce costs, improve throughputs, um, uh, reduce energy efficiency, particularly uh, laterally with, uh, with the cost of utilities. It's um, it's a big push. Yeah. Um, but most often there's the case that um, the numbers employed don't don't go down. Um, your, your throughput or your, your capabilities go up and your, uh, your unit cost is shared over over um, over a smaller smaller labor base instead. So I mean examples including um, sort of a couple of places, Vitalis, um, uh, Thomas Thomas Swan um, in, a, in a couple of different plants now. Um, sort of doubling our, our more more for the throughput with the with the same with the same labor which which couldn't have operated the um, the plans. I mean the, the old the old sort of uh, lazy lazy engineering route was um, expansion. So you would you would double up on double up on everything, double up on footprint, double up on on labor, and there you go. There's your there's your throughput. Yeah. Anybody yep. anybody can do that. Um, it's about um, it's about squeezing squeezing the process. Um, low cost low cost capex where possible and getting the best out of, of what you've got without without increasing headcount um, and then and then upskilling upskilling the um, the labor and the, the maintenance team behind it the engineering team uh, designing it and um, optimizing it to uh, to adapt to the adapt to the change that's where that's yeah. that's where we've re- really been pushing rather than sort of spending on um, expanding plants and uh, yeah. and sort of well, it's, it's, it's really good advice because unfortunately now, like you say, gone a day where, where they can really plan with mass growth numbers because it's only going to get hard, particularly for the next five, 10 years. It's, it's, it's only going to get harder, like you say, with the amount of people who are going to be retiring without any real succession planning. It's um, it's tricky. So exactly that, get get the best out of what, what you can do. And and, this, and it isn't all about the numbers. And that's the same for, for a lot of industries, I think. And actually, I think since COVID, I think companies have probably realised that they can actually do, to some extent, more with less and look after staff more it's not all about all about the numbers so i think that has has changed things um so no i i completely agree um i mean out of interest you make you mentioned the there obviously you know sellerfield the tell us summer swarm you know it's it's um that's obviously your you know what you've done throughout your the bulk of your career how was it you know when when you're you know, working for nissan for example you know massive massive name obviously you know everyone knows yeah, all yeah. these yeah. how was that working that i guess quite different environment for a period of time for you um, yeah, very, very different culturally. Um, very large organisation. Um, had a very sort of definite way of doing things, but um, the, the application of the the application of management um, skills is the is the same. Um, supporting supporting a team. Um, in in Nissan, I wasn't the I wasn't the discipline expert, which is um, which is a bit a bit unusual from um, from my current experience and where I've been previous. Um, yeah. I was kind of the go-to uh, technically, and um, I would be coming up with all the ideas for uh, for improving the plant and what to do um, and where the sort of strategy came from and how we were going to grow and how we were going to optimize it. Um, I had to use the I had to use the team a lot more. Um, so it was yeah, completely different environment. Um, but uh, my heart lies in the in the chemical industry. So um, yeah. yeah, when Thomas Swan came knocking, I was uh, yeah. <laughs> I was up yeah. for it. <laughs> yeah, and, and how have they? I guess you know you started there a very interesting time. I guess you know before yeah. before the madness, you you've seen what you know, and then joining. I mean, how, how did they work through that and adapt? Did you, have you seen quite a bit of change since you've been there? Yeah, I mean Thomas Thomas Swan's an excellent company. The um, fourth generation, family owned. Uh, Harry Harry Swan's the current current owner and CEO, and yeah, um, yeah he's a, he's a he's a great guy. He's all all for the people. Um, yeah. It's not stolen the switchboard, isn't it? I think when you when you call up, it's his voice. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's it. yeah, yeah. That's a <laughs> Harry Harry message greeting. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, no, Harry's Harry's a great guy. The the, the people at uh, Thomas Swan are, are fantastic. We've got a got a great great group of guys there. Um, uh, through the yeah, the pandemic was uh, was a challenge. I think as as it was for everyone. Um, uh, just before, just before the pandemic, we made a decision to, um, to double the capacity of our um, most lucrative uh, 
uh, API plants make an antimicrobial, so right. um, the disinfectant, I feel like. Yeah. Um, so come, come COVID, it was, uh, it was pretty popular, but uh, we were, I was um, fully committed to, uh, to expansion, so we put, put a load of new um, vessels in, tweaked this, that, and the other in the, in the process, and we were ready to switch over. Um, and not um, at about the same time, um, the demand for the, the product uh, just went ballistic, absolutely, absolutely bananas. So mm -hmm. where, where we'd allowed um, sort of commissioning time and um, a, a lower output during that time, it had to run, it had to run flat out uh, while we expanded it, which was a, which was a challenge uh, for nice. quite some time. Um, yeah. And yeah, it was a. Um, I mean, a fantastic achievement in the end, but um, yeah, a lot of a lot of work, um, a lot of hours put in by by me and the team, and uh, got there in the end. But um, yeah, me, yeah, what COVID uh, we did. <laughs> <which, laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and I've always I've always held Thomas one in, in high regard. And I've worked I've worked, worked in the main times in the past, and it seems to be that type of business which just has a good reputation. People don't leave very often. It's, it's well yeah. thought of. Um, it's a nice tight knit community. Can you obviously you've been there for three years now, and you've you've had, you've you've had enough experience to compare it? Mm -hmm. What would you say is the key thing that keeps people there and, and keeps people happy? Would you say in in a, in a cold in a, in a in a market like right now where people are leaving for ten p more an hour, and and, and you know the, the lo loyalty is 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 probably at an all time low. I would say now across a lot of companies. So what what would you yeah. say could, that they've done right that it's worked. Uh, I think there's a few th different things. I think the, I think the family culture, although is, um, I mean, it's not a, it's not a small company. It's an SME, but um, the, the family culture kind of extends right the way through and shines through as well. I think, um, I think uh, people are people are treated well. I think that's I think it's important. People are people are valued. They treat well. They're involved. Um, there's a lot of diversity in what uh, Thomas Swan do as well, so it um, kind of it uh, we managed to ride the the COVID um, pandemic pretty it's pretty well. Proof, so yeah, yeah. Obviously, a lot of the uh, um, a lot of the business was affected where it was um, sort of supplying and oh, most of the products are intermediate, but supplied into um, sort of retail uh, end products. So they they took a, a bit of a nose dive, but the um, the antimicrobial um, went ballistic, and now now we're seeing a bit of a leveling off, and the, the retail stuff coming back. So I think there's a there's a security thing there as well uh, for the for the people that work at uh, Thomas Swans. It's um, it's been been there since 1926, and isn't um, isn't, isn't going anywhere. Um, now there's ambition in terms of um, growth of the business. Um, um, Harry's really really strong on uh, sustainability as well and he set some um, right. set some uh, big targets on um, net zero um, CO2 by 2030 which is um, it's pretty aggressive and yeah, yeah, yeah yeah we're investing a lot in um, in uh, energy efficiency sustainability uh, green green in chemistry to uh, to achieve that and trying to trying to um, kind of set the standard for the for the industry as an SME which is uh, I mean it's in that's a, it's incredible. It's a big boys that should be um, showing yeah. us what to do, and we should be copy paste, copy paste. But uh, I think yeah. I think there's a there's a kind of sense of pride of um, of working in a in a small company that's actually changing, changing things, in, innovating, and um, and making a making a difference in the industry. Is is the in terms of the the net zero side and, and that and I say so that's ag aggressive, but really really good to see that that's obviously an absolute priority of the business because that's the problem. Isn't it? it doesn't have to be yet, and and that's why a lot of the big companies should be, but they're not. So absolutely fair play. Is there is there anything you can share which they've started to sort of gradually put in place? I guess yet because I think this is something that a lot of clients are asking are asking other clients, and and I think anything shared is is a massive yeah. help for us really. I don't then and you can share at all. Yeah, yeah, I think. Uh... Um, I think uh, sustainable manufacturing needs to be at, um, at the, the kind of forefront. Um, it's probably hitting people more more now than it than it was. So it's, uh, I, I would imagine it's been kicked up the up the agenda on um, in yep. most board meetings in terms of the uh, energy costs. Certainly, yes. um, I think 
I mean, so, sort of going back going back years, it was always a for me it was a, a bit of an easy easy win looking at um, looking at new plants processes and thinking how can I how can I make them more more en- energy efficient? How can we make a saving there? Because it, it comes straight off the straight off the bottom line. It's um, mm-hmm. you don't you don't have to you don't have to sell it. You yeah. don't have to make your margin on it. It's straight off your bottom line. So if you make a if you make an energy saving or a um, power saving or whatever it might be to do with utilities, it's it's a it's a saving to be had, and um, it's it's part of um, the company's um, kind of environmental commitment as well. Uh, most most of these sites are, are permitted, and there's a there's a commitment to uh, continuous improvement. So there's a there's a there's a commitment there, um, regardless as part of that. Um, but I think I think those those companies that not aren't seriously looking at that now um, will be bitten will be bitten um, quite yeah. soon. Um, Close sighted, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I think so. I think um, I think twenty thirty is aggressive, but um, the cost of the cost of carbon carbon is gonna, is just going to go crazy. I think. Um, yeah. So yeah. your best your best be in there now. Invest invest now and um, and and do do what you can to to do well. Do your part to. Um, Sort of help the environment, but help yourselves um, in terms of sustainable manufacturing as well. Just yeah, I completely. And you're you're right with energy cost soaring. I think it is. You know, now people will be will be forced to look at it. So uh, yeah. no, that that's that's really good advice. Um, so some um, some sort of obviously quick five questions in terms of um, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, as you were sorry, mate. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking in terms of um, sort of uh, ideas and stuff. I would I would suggest people look at. Um, Look at energy efficiency on site. Um, we use a, um, a basically an energy balancer, like a, like a Sankey diagram, to look at where you where your gas, your um, electricity, where your water, uh, where your big users are, and then target target those first. Um, Harry had the hi- hindsight of um, a number of years ago of uh, of investing in an anaerobic digestion plant, uh, a biogas plant uh, to. Um, to produce power for this for the site it's operated by a third party but um good move um oh, yeah. yeah there was the sort of feed-in tariffs and uh, rhi benefits at the time yeah. and 80 percent of the site's power comes from electricity so you give me a bit of a bit of a head start in uh <laughs> the um changes so yeah, yeah that was a that was a good move about uh about a decade ago or so yeah, yeah wise investment yeah. But yeah, there's loads and loads of um, cheap savings to be had. Look at look at insulation. I mean, um, sort of going back sort of 20, 30 years, um, people would scrimp on um, insulation on uh, on vessels, on on pipe work and, and such because uh, the paybacks were for a few years or so. The the um, typically for sort of steam and uh, thermal oil um, hot hot services, they're, uh, they're kind of six months now or, or less. So. Just, just get them done. Um, have a look at those projects which didn't really, I didn't previously um, make the cut. Um, just, just keep, um, just keep going through these iterations. I think we're on the, the fourth iteration of um, insulation improvements in, in, in about two years now. So, right. it's just project after project after project to, um, to address the, the priorities at, uh, yeah, the that. small bit of time. Good advice. It's, it's, it's really specific advice. People can actually. Utilize and, and get started because that's it. It's getting started, isn't it? It's getting started and, and then just, having a and project yeah, managing yeah. it. Yeah, just just small wins. Show the um, show the business account and watch uh, the the payback, and then yeah. you'll, you'll keep getting the investment because it um, it pays back really quickly. But it has to come from the top, doesn't it? And the fact that obviously that, that's coming it from Harry. It, it needs that. It needs that drive. It needs that want. I mean, it's le- less so now, but um, sort of a, a few years ago, the, the paybacks for. Um, so the energy efficiency project might have been sort of three, four years. So um, other other primar- priorities might have come in if the, if the business was kind of short sighted around um, payback for capex. But um, yeah, we've we've pushed a number of number of these things through, and uh, it's starting to some to help the business now where 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 things are tight. Yeah, yeah, love that. Excellent, perfect. A few uh, quick fireish questions I'd ask everyone. Um, What's the most innovative technology or strategy you've implemented to help change your team or business for the better? You should have quite a few of these. You agree? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, we've we've made uh, quite some changes in the within the team. So um, 
as, as I said before, we've got a um, bit of an older workforce in terms of the um, technicians. So a lot of a lot of retirements we've seen seen coming up. We've uh, lost a lost a couple with another um, another couple to go over the next um, next year or so. Um, so we've kind of refocused refocused the team. Um, Try to try to focus what with uh, not not just on the maintenance team, but an extension of the maintenance team. It's not not really innovative as such. It's um, it's techniques which have been in place, um, kind of driven by uh, driven by the Japanese, like the Toyota and, and such um, over years. It's uh, all productive maintenance, so involving um, involving the operators um, in autonomous maintenance. Um, I mean, the the operators have um, fantastic experience and. Uh, and they, they know the they know the plans best. They know how um, know how things operate, how they should sound, um, what what um, what rates they should pump at. Um, if something if something's running bad, they, they, they understand it before before they report it. Um, and we've tried to upskill skill the operators to um, to do some basic tasks like the four bolt fittings, um, like um, connections and um, some. Uh, Basic things like um, checking and changing changing filters, and then trying to move that on to um, have them have them doing more um, sort of condition based maintenance um, inspections as well to uh, to keep the plants running to the best best they can. So uh, on top of um, sort of keeping the the plant and equipment um, sort of clean and in a, um, standard condition, um, doing doing uh, routine checks which would otherwise have been done by um, a maintenance guy, but uh, it's quite within the, the capability of the of the experienced operators we have um, to enable the, the maintenance guys to upskill uh, again and do um, more more clever techniques like, um, like the vibration analysis, thermography, uh, oil sampling, um, um, risk based assessments, and uh, inspection. Sorry, and um, looking at um, sort of predictive techniques and more more advanced maintenance techniques rather than just spending spending all the time doing uh sort of routine checks and um yeah yeah so that's 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 where we're kind of transitioning it's 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 partly a partly a skills shortage and partly a, um uh a cost a cost thing as well it's um it, we provide an expensive service so yeah. if we can um provide more value in that um and that maintenance service we, we provide, then the then the business um, this business business is better off for it. But we also see the um, given the given the operators that um, that extra that extra skill and the yeah, yeah. autonomy as well. I think uh, I mean there's there's obviously um, any any change is um, is difficult for for some, but um, some have really embraced it and um, they hated the idea of um, of wait, waiting waiting by something that was. Some broken or blocked or, or whatever it might be. Yeah. Waiting, yeah. Waiting, for, waiting for somebody to come when they knew they could do it, but just yeah. hadn't been kind of trained and authorized, if you like. So, yeah, that, yeah we've seen the, the positive uptake on that. So, it's, it's a great yeah, mentality, that exactly that. Because I think otherwise, you're just putting people in boxes, aren't you? That's your job, that's your job. Yeah, yeah. and I can't, I can't, I can't stand that. It's a, a small, it's a small company. Um, I've got, I've got to wear a lot of hats and, um, yeah. And, and and in most in most cases, people people want that little bit more responsibility or autonomy. So um, yeah, I think, yeah I, think we, I think we need to push it through. And I think if anything, that that helps your attention too, because you know you, you've only got a, an operator as an example for them to move on somewhere else. Yeah. Then their role is going to be reduced, and, and they're already starting to skill themselves, and and they will start to get used to that level of responsibility and and, and enjoy it. So now, and yeah, hundred um, yeah, percent. As a as a as a maintenance recruit for ten years, anything which is a uh, Positive towards maintenance technicians, I'm, I'm all for. So, um, no, I, th I think that's, that's really, really clever. And um, getting you, again, it goes back to what we said about getting the best out of what, we, what, you, what you have and it also becomes less risk because you're managing less people and, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah. less problems. Some extent. No, I like that. Um, three things or three words or three things that make up a, a good leader, would you say? Um, I think... Um... I think it's, I think it's important to be um, to, sh to show an interest to have to have an, a genuine interest in the in the in the person in the individual, yeah. Um, in their in how they do, in how their career progresses, in their um, 
and whether they're happy. Um, I think that's I think that's really important to to show to show an interest in treating treating individuals as as they are. Um, it's wonderful that people are individuals. Yeah. Um, I think it's I think it's important to um, to support to coach and and mentor as well and to invest your time. I, I think I think it's incredibly incredibly important to um, to give that little bit of time, whether it's a whether it's an open door or it's a um, it's a it's a regular one to one, just giving that that individual a bit of a bit of time. Um, I'm probably going to go on th- four or five things. I think. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, I think um, I think trust's important as well. Yeah. You've got to you've got you've got to trust you've got to trust your people. Um, I think you've got to. You need you need to trust that people want to do want to do the right thing, um, and the the want to do the want to do well. Mm-hmm. Um, it might it might just be that you haven't uh, if they, if they don't do well or or the or they're disappointed. It's because you haven't you haven't set them up well. I think that's that's more often the more often the case than not. Um, I think that's I think it's important trust. Um, I think. Um, You've got to give people opportunities. You've got to you have to delegate without delegating for the sake of delegating to make it your life your life easier. I think you've got to you've got to be thoughtful about um, delegation and um, and give give people opportunities um, and either either put them in the right the right job or give them give them opportunities to excel to to grow themselves and to uh, to gain confidence where, whereby they'll they'll start to um, to start to exceed yeah that's yeah i think that's what's what's happening love that yeah and uh look thank you so much for for this i think it's it's been great it's had loads of value and i always like to think what i've learned from it because i think others might have learned the same and for me i think you 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 nailed it there about trust and not only the support you need to give your staff and how important that is but actually to to trust them essentially because i think there's 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 some fear sometimes there that, you know, you give someone too much trust or, or too much rope, then, you know, it's, it's not always the best way to go. Or actually, you much rather see people have a go, make mistakes, and then you are there to, when they do fall, to pick them back up. And I like your analogy you made by that because I think it's perfect. And also, you know, on the, on the core of the manufacturing side, the renewables, the, the you know, the, the all the, the tips there, I think, you know, massively will help companies as they start to go on that, on that journey. So, um, look, really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Andrew Mistar. Excellent. No, thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation. I've, en- I've enjoyed speaking to you. Yeah. Thanks, Cheers. Man.